Sesame Street, a place of inclusion and learning for generations of kids. But Sesame Place, the theme park based on characters from the iconic children's TV show, is issuing an apology this morning after backlash from this video, showing two young black girls seemingly snubbed by a performer dressed as Rosita at the Sesame Place theme park near Philadelphia. All right, Uncle Junior, need you to take on another video. But before that, as always, welcome back to the folks tuning in and welcome to the first timers. No doubt, nephew, welcome to another Uncle Junior episode. Be sure to drop a comment, hit that like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. Now, what video are we taking on today, nephew? The racist Muppet, Uncle June. Uh, the racist Muppet, nephew. That's right, Uncle June. Rosita the Muppet and accusations of racism. So apparently we've run out of actual people, white people that is, to accuse of racism, and now we're turning to Muppets to get our racism fixed, no doubt. So it must be pretty slow out there in the race hustling world, nephew. So much so that we're making accusations against Muppets. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it seems that way, Uncle June. Rosita the Muppet is on the fire for appearing to snub two little black girls who were seeking a hug from the Muppet at the Philadelphia Sesame Place theme park parade. Well, nephew, you know, there's nothing sacred in this country from accusations of racism. Now, we've seen it before, so I guess it's no surprise. If a rock, a syrup bottle, and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich can be racist, then damn it, why not a Muppet? But let's check it out. Sesame's Place being under fire this morning, the Popular Kids Amusement Park apologized after a video went viral that appeared to show a costume character snubbing two black girls. While there are claims of racism, the park is saying the video is not what it appears to be. TJ Holmes is here with more. Good morning, TJ. Straight, let's stick with what you just said. The video is not what it appears to be. That's what the park says. So that's why I want everybody to see it for yourselves now, to our viewers. All right, so let's just roll the video. Take a look at it here now. Okay, you see the character coming, high-fiving everybody as it goes down the street. Gets to those two little girls. It appears to just flat out say no, and you see the little girls and their faces and their heart broken. Now, yeah. there was an initial statement the park put out that explained what you just saw. Then they updated that statement to saying that what you just saw is not okay. Sesame Street, a place of inclusion and learning for generations of kids. But Sesame Place, the theme park based on characters from the iconic children's TV show, is issuing an apology this morning after backlash from this video, showing two young black girls seemingly snubbed by a performer dressed as Rosita at the Sesame Place theme park near Philadelphia. When he got to my children, he, as you can see in the video, just told them no and kept on moving. And then I had stopped the video because I was upset. But after that, he proceeded to hug another girl of a different race. And to me, it's like, so the kids automatically were like, as you can see in the video, they were, you know, upset. The character of Rosita seeming to shake her finger no before passing by the two little girls. They're thinking that they did something wrong when they did absolutely nothing wrong. And then to see other children be acknowledged and then you're not acknowledged. Sesame Place initially released a statement saying that the costumes characters wear sometimes make it difficult for them to see, adding the Rosita performer did not intentionally ignore the girls and is devastated about the misunderstanding. These are innocent children and the job of the character is to bring joy to the kids and to, you know, acknowledge them. And I'm kind of happy that it went viral because now it brings light to a situation that we shouldn't have anyway. As a result, Sesame Place has issued a second statement saying that they are committed to making this right, adding they will conduct training for our employees so they better understand, recognize, and deliver an inclusive, equitable, and entertaining experience for our guests. And you all, in that initial statement, they also explained that the character was actually waving off a family that wanted them to take a picture with the baby, which the characters aren't allowed to do. That was a part of the explanation as well. Look, the family and their attorney is going to have a press conference here in New York today. But the little girls, six years old, I mean, yeah. no matter where you come down on interpretation, their little hearts were broken. Yeah. And the girls are so sad. They said they've actually gotten counseling for the girls right now, and they've just been su surrounded by family with the support for now. So we just want to make There's sure they're so okay. much. You know, nephew, in 1947, 
a racial snub of epic proportions occurred. Jackie Robinson, the first black man to play in Major League Baseball, was snubbed by his white Brooklyn Dodger teammates, who said they would rather sit out rather than play alongside Robinson. Then in 1955, a snub of epic proportions also occurred. Rosa Parks snubbed racist bus driver James F. Blake's order to vacate a row of four seats in the colored section in favor of a white passenger. And here we are today, once again, witnessing a racial snub of epic proportions. Two little black girls, names unknown, are left heartbroken when they are denied a high five from Rosita the Muppet during the Sesame Place theme park parade. So as we salute Jackie Robinson and Rosa Parks, the great Muppet snub of 2022 will no doubt be remembered as one of the greatest snubs in American history. Let's pause for a moment of silence. All right, <laughs> now that we've gotten that sarcasm out of the way, back to this non-incident incident that's been blown way out of proportion by opportunistic adults seeking to cash in on the hustle of the day, racism. Nephew, did I hear the GMA host say that the girls are in counseling due to this traumatic event? Yeah, Uncle June, that's what he said. You know, it's amazing how these racially corrupted adults have no shame when it comes to their selfish desires to enrich themselves, even at the expense of these little innocent girls. All the counseling that these little girls needed could have been found at an ice cream shop. Their disappointment could have been quickly erased with a Baskin and Robbins caramel turtle truffle on top of a sprinkled waffle cone. <laughs> All would have been right with the world as far as those little girls would have been concerned with a little ice cream bliss. However, the tainted adults have more sinister ulterior motives. They see a pot of gold at the end of the Sesame Street rainbow. They see a corporation with deep pockets, which means we need to bolster our $25 million lawsuit allegation by claiming that these little girls are forever traumatized at the hands of Rosita, the racist Muppet. So let's listen to the art of the corporate shakedown from the race hustler, Tamika Mallory, as she waxes poetically in true race hustler style. Take it away, race hustler Tamika. Because we want to send a notice not just to Sesame Place, but to all of the theme parks across this country that if you are found to be participating in discriminatory behavior against our people, we will drag your name through the mud. Like I said, a true race hustler, Tamika Mallory, a disciple of the race hustling godfather himself, Al Sharpton. So as you can hear, she learned from the best. Tamika is no stranger to the dynamic of racism and black victimhood. As far as she's concerned, the two go hand in hand, with the end game being a come up for herself, just like she was taught. Now she's also the object of the ire of Samaria Rice, the mother of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy who was shot and killed by a police officer while brandishing a fake gun outside a recreation center in Cleveland, Ohio. The officer mistook the fake gun as a real gun. Along with other race-hustling activists, Tamika Mallory, according to Tamir Rice's mother, used her son's death for financial gain. So Tamika's back, ladies and gentlemen, in true race-hustling style. So you see, it's not about these little girls. It's about race-hustling opportunity. And there is no shame in the game, from the mother, to the lawyers, to the activists. They're all looking to hit the social justice lottery. If it comes at the expense of children, so be it. The hustle must live on. <laughs> 